Hey, good morning, teachers. Three, three quick things I want to hit on. Uh, first of all, learning loss mitigation funds. We've got money from the federal government. We collected this earlier. Uh, Mr. Winheim is giving us some more time, okay? So I sent out some information yesterday to the content leads. Folks, on the learning loss mitigation funds, the, the government is saying, hey, here's some money to try to mitigate, to try to lessen the blow to our kids right now in their learning. And so there's a couple things I want you to focus on as you think of things your students might need. Uh, because they have to fit very clearly defined definitions. Defined definitions. I don't know if that makes sense to English teachers, but listen. Think about this. What can we do to close the learning gaps through learning supports for your students? What can we do to provide additional academic services such as diagnostic assessments, additional instructional materials, and supports? Think about those two big things. Now, we don't know what's going to happen in the third quarter, the fourth quarter. We, we really don't at this time. Think about and plan for your students being gone the third quarter. Just think about that because that's kind of you know a worst case scenario. What can we be sending home with them for the third quarter? Does every kid in your STEM class need a, a kit to go home in the third quarter? Think outside the box. Think about if they all do come back onto campus. Again, does, does, do we need to buy more instructional materials for you? Is there a textbook, an online textbook, that you really want right now that you don't have access to? Some kind of technology right now that would help you in the learning loss area for your students. Think about those things. We have until November 6th now. Okay, to, so reach out to your content lead. Uh, content leads, very specific information on that form that we need. Second thing, we're doing a little awards presentation. Uh, it's going to be very brief, very simple, folks, but for first quarter. I know traditionally these have been done for the semester. Uh, we're trying to think outside the box, encourage our kids. So uh, one thing I'm bringing here to the school is we're going to have up in our office pictures of our top 10 kids, our top 10 seniors, academic, from their freshman year on up through their senior year, uh, top 10 juniors, top 10 sophomores, possibly freshmen. we got to look. A lot of times freshmen you get like 20 or 30 tied. Uh, and so... So that's one thing we're doing. We're also going to be awarding all the perfect attendance kids, okay, for this first quarter. Another thing we're doing, Felicia is going to be reaching out to you this morning. Uh, and we'd like, here's what we're doing. On the 21st Century Awards, I know there's been a tradition here. Again, something we do at the end of the year where it's like one kid per, uh, per grade level. Here's what I want to do. Again, just to encourage our kids at the time of distance learning. Uh, there's seven categories, right? Collaboration, initiative, being a critical thinker, curiosity, communicator, uh, analyzing info, uh, being agility and, and adapting. Uh, these seven categories, Felicia is going to explain to you in, in a Google form. I want each of our teachers, just make this simple, each of our teachers select one student of yours who fits into one of those seven categories. Uh, that's it. It's very simple. Each teacher selects one kid. Folks, listen, our counselors are spending a ton of time reaching out to, to our kids who are absent and who, kids who are struggling. So we're reaching out a lot to those, those, those kids kind of at the bottom. We would classify them, right? We're, we're acknowledging a lot of kids at the very top. Perfect attendance. Top 10 kids. We got a lot of kids right in the middle. Pick one of those kids in the middle to acknowledge. For some of them, it's not going to be a big deal when they see their name on the screen on a, on a presentation. For others, it's going to be a huge deal. So think about one kid you want to encourage. I would say, who's done the best? Who's one kid who's done the absolute best that you can think of in overcoming some things uh, to, to engage with you distance learning wise? Look, I know some of you are going to want to nominate 20 kids. Folks, we're doing one kid per teacher. Uh, keep it simple. Please respond to us by Friday on that one. And then third, guys, we sent out an information about this uh, new schedule idea, okay? Listen, we, again, we, we have no idea what's going to happen. We, we really don't come third quarter. This is one idea we're looking at. Some of the feedback that came back, confusing, uh, can't understand it. It's a very simple concept that a couple school districts are using right now where we take uh, quarter three, Students have three, just three classes, quarter three, just three classes, quarter four, okay? They're doing one class a day. That's it, one class per day. We have your group, your, your class broken into two groups. One is doing synchronous instruction on campus. The other is doing async at home. You're never teaching two environments at once. We do not want our teachers to do that. 
So you're focused on one environment at a time. Okay, and then they're hitting here, you know, first period, second period, third period. So first period, Monday, Tuesday, second period, Thursday, Wednesday, third period, Thursday, back to first period. Folks, this is one thing we're looking at. Uh, some of you absolutely hate it, and that's fine. That's okay. It's okay to hate it right now. Some of you love it, and that's, that's great. That's fine. Uh, we don't know where we're going to be. If there's an idea that one of our teachers could come up with, please do it. Uh, you need to think about your kids not intermixing. They're coming into one classroom to receive their education. They're not leaving that classroom the entire day they're here. Uh, that's one of our biggest issues right now with the county guidelines. So again, this is one sample that we've stolen from a couple districts doing it. I've talked to those districts, they love it. I've talked to some of those teachers, they love it. it the, the one downside is 150 minute class, so that's a long time. None of the instructional models that we're, we, we choose to go with are going to be perfect. Nobody's going to love them all. That's where we're at. We're going to have to find out what we think will work best for kids first, uh, teachers second, and, and go with that. Uh, last thing, a lot of our data that we're getting back from parents right now shows that they, they don't want their kids to come back. Uh, and when I say a lot, we've surveyed our ELD students and special ed kids, and out of only 50 who have responded to that survey, 75% of those parents are saying they don't want their kids to come back at this time. So uh, we'll see. That is going to drive our decision making. That's going to help to drive some of the schedule, is how many parents want their kids to come back, how many want them to stay in the distance learning model. So folks, hang in there again. My encouragement to teachers is to focus on now. Do the best you can right now with what you've got, and uh, we'll go from there together. Thanks. Have a great day.